The next segment we shall be covering begins in chapter 2, verse 1, all the way through chapter 3, verse 6. Here we shall see a divine rebuke, the Joshua generation, and the introduction to the cycles of apostasy and deliverance. We, be, we begin with the divine rebuke in chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And these five verses contain the story of the first of three confrontations between God and Israel found in Judges. The second one will be in chapter 6, verse 7 through 10, and the last one will be in chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. The all showed that Israel's failure to take the land, as described in chapter 1, was not the fault of God, but Israel's own fault due to disobedience. We begin with the rebuke in chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And the angel of Yahweh, the angel of Jehovah, came up from the Gilgal to Bochim. And he said, I made you to go up out of Egypt, and have brought you unto the land which I swore unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. He shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. He shall break down their altars. But you have not hearkened unto my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a sneer unto you. The rebuker is named in the first part of verse uh, 1, and the angel of Yahweh, the angel of Jehovah, came up from Gilgal to Bohem. The angel of Yahweh is always the second person of the triune God. And Gilgal was the last place he appeared historically back in Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 to 15, which is well before this passage. But now he went up from Gilgal to Bohem. This was not merely a geographical migration, but also a spiritual one. Gilgal is where he appeared to Joshua, where God was with the Israelites due to their obedience in circumcision and in keeping the Pesach, the keeping of the Passover. Bohem is not an actual place name, but a commemorative name based upon a specific event. It may even be a pseudonym for Bethel, since that is where the tribes of Israel were going to inquire of the Lord in Judges chapter 4, verse 5. It was also the place of the Oak of Weeping in Genesis chapter 35, verse 4, and what the term bohi means is weeping. The rabbis trying to get around the obvious problem here claim that the term malach, translated as angel, should be translated here as messenger, and that the messenger was really Phineas, the high priest. However, that is not what the text means literally. The words of the rebuke itself is now found in verse the second part of verse 1 through verse 3. The second part of verse 1 deals with what God did for Israel, which included three things. First, I made you to go up out of Egypt. Second, and I brought you unto the land which I swore unto your fathers. Third, and I said, I will never break my covenant with you. This is possibly a reference to the land promise in the Abrahamic covenant, but could also be in reference to the Mosaic covenant, which stated that the enjoyment of the land was conditioned on obedience. So ownership of the land is unconditional, but the, uh, enjoying the land is, is conditional on their obedience. And the angel of Yahweh, the angel of Jehovah, is clearly speaking as if he were God, and why? Because he was God. In the first part of verse 2, in light of what God had just said, Israel had two obligations. First, to make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. Second, to break down their altars. But as the second part of verse 2 shows, Israel failed in these obligations. Hence the accusation is, But ye have not hearkened unto my voice, which is followed by the question, why have ye done this? The full length of this particular video presentation is 42 minutes. This brief sample should help to demonstrate the depth and quality of these teachings and recordings.
There are 27 video lectures, nearly 14 hours of teaching content for this course on the Book of Judges and the Book of Ruth. To order this or another online course, visit us at www.arielcollege.com.